So we grew up in the jungle. We'd come back every like three and a half to 40 years. Yeah. And the problem that we saw was interacting with our peers is that many of them are just lukewarm. Um, what our culture, our media, and even many of our churches are teaching our young people is that you are to follow your own dreams, your own ambitions, you know, follow yourself. Right. And um, that's just not what God's words teaches us. Mm -hmm. And being on the field, we got to see God work in amazing ways, got to witness firsthand that following Christ is the ultimate adventure in life. Right. So that's really kind of our motto, following yeah. Christ is the ultimate adventure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's kind of why we created Wild Brothers TV is to combat all these all those false narrative that our culture is teaching our young people. For sure. Um, and through the medium of entertainment, really action-packed adventure entertainment, share with our young people that uh, following Christ is the ultimate adventure. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Hey, we are still here live at Rise Up Con. We're sitting with two of the four Wild Brothers, and we're excited mm -hmm. to uh, get to introduce them a little bit, learn about what they're doing in the Settle world. Settle down, fellas. Set uh, a little wild, a little wild, a little, right. little wild. Little wild. <laughs> I feel uh, mellow today. So. Yeah, yeah. I get uh, you. thank you for for making a, uh, some time to come over and talk with us. Of course, I'm I'm here with Jared, my. My, uh, my, I haven't gone anywhere. You're my I'm wingman. You're my wingman. You're my. If I'm Maverick, you can be Goose, but you die. Thanks so a lot. Maybe you should Appreciate be. Appreciate um, that. I was, can I, can I, I be? A, who's the other dude? Yeah. Who's the other wingman? Ice. Ice Iceman. 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 You're that's Val me. Kilmer. I'll be Val Kilmer. Okay, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you that have okay? the air. Thank you. That's yeah, right. he, 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 dies dies the, the, he dies in the new movie though. Oh crap! Everybody keeps dying. At least he like lived. You were right. He lived his life. You know, that's okay. That's true. So, so the Wild Brothers. Wild Brothers. TV. Tell us, uh, introduce yourselves. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing. Yeah, so I'm Morgan Wild. It's my brother Hudson. Um, we're the, the in the string of brothers. We're the first two. So I'm the oldest. This is number two. Ooh. We have two other brothers mm -hmm. who are yeah. not here right now. So. You're the two well, older yeah, brothers. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah, you guys yeah. are really the best brothers to have here, anyway. Ah, it's so funny. four to make the unit. It does. It does. That's, that's good. Yeah. But you, but it kind of say you were the kind of the, the. Were you the leaders of the pack, or were you guys kind of all uh, you know, all in it together? It's like all about a collective effort. What, what would you say? Who led the way? Uh, and, this guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oldest is always the the natural leader, right? Uh, okay. Sure. It's and, definitely um, a team effort, though. Yeah, we we're definitely a team. It takes the four of us to get anything done, and we, we wear a lot of hats. But we're most productive when all four of us are working full steam. That's so. good. Well, and now, content producers. Yeah. Morgan Morgan's kind of the leader. Yes. I facilitate. I'm the adventure guy. So whatever is involved with vehicle or boat or safety, that's kind of my my job. But then my younger brother Kean is also one of the primary leaders because he's a videographer. So he's these guys are like the directors. They got the camera. They're shooting things. So we listen to Morgan and then Kia and Ash and I are kind of just follow along. Yeah, when, did, yeah. when did your which one's the videographer? Because we met you guys over there. Yeah. Who's Kian. Is, that, is that the youngest? So that's the third. He's, third. he's right okay. after me. The, gotcha. dark, the darker yeah, yeah. hair. Yeah. 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 And uh, when did your journey start? Like, what? To take us back a few years to like when did Wild Brothers become a thing? Well, we're, I we're, mean, I know without really story. making yeah. this, yeah. we'll condense it. You, <laughs> the short, yeah, the short yeah, the version short is version. that um, we're four brothers. We're um, from the Panhandle, Florida, originally, and uh, my dad well, was exciting. a. Our last name is Wild. Our last name's Wild. Okay. Uh, my dad was a boat captain. He had his own charter business, but um, early on in life, he was um, basically through this this interesting documentary. He was exposed to really the needs around the world, the needs of mm. unreached people groups who didn't have access to God's word, the Bible, and uh, translate in their heart language. And as a young guy, he was really stirred by that. And so he ended up actually kind of, he, he was almost done with his uh, marine biology degree. He ended up dropping out of that. He sold his boat, charter boat business, and he um, went into career missionary work. And so my brothers and I, we were kind of, we were, you know, had no say in it, but that was kind of the life that my parents propelled <laughs> us into. And so it was a pretty oh, exciting, sure, adventurous right. life. Yeah. So we, uh, the youngest was born over there. Over okay. in Indonesia. So we spent our lives in uh, the country of Indonesia, um, living in the basically remote highland rainforest jungle mm -hmm. among a beautiful indigenous people group called the, the Wano. And that was our childhood. And so our backyard was literally endless, endless miles of, of basically virgin jungle. Um, never been explored wow. by a Western naturalist. And we had the privilege of growing up there among this amazing, people, the Wano, and we got to learn their heart language, and we lived among them full-time for uh, basically our, our entire childhood, mm -hmm. learned, learned their language and their culture, um, 
you know, grew up rubbing shoulders with them, going out, learning how to hunt and shoot bows and arrows and trap wow. trap animals. Um, we were natural amateur naturalists by trade, so we made a lot of significant dis- uh, discoveries of science. Have beetles and you know butterflies and moths named after our family, and I yeah. oh. uh, just grew up having a lot of great adventures. And it was mm. during that time that um, our home church in America started asking about our lives overseas, and we saw that there's just a not a lot of resources available um, about modern day missions, especially from the perspective of younger kids. And so we started basically creating content for our peers in America, trying mm. to expose them to to the needs around the world, but also the great adventure it is to follow Christ with your life. And so that yeah. kind of led from one thing to another, and um, we started basically making videos. So that's kind of the, it's kind of a condensed version. Yeah. 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 Well, and we grew up loving reality TV. That was kind of our go-to. <laughs> yeah. Love right. like yes. Adventures, Bear Grylls, Steve oh, Irwin, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Doug Dynasty. And so we kind of followed that format of reality TV. So that's yeah. kind of our genre that we specialize in. I have several award-winning TV shows. But then we also love documentaries. Um, so our documentaries are a little bit different. They're like, we call them adventure documentaries. Sure. You know, it's like action, but also we're explaining yeah. uh, you know, different discoveries that we're making in archaeology and, and different creatures. So mm-hmm. that's kind of our genre of like action adventure. Yeah, yeah so we created content for different, uh, a number of different years. We had it kind of distributed and licensed um, to different places. But then about a year ago, we started our own streaming platform called Wild Brothers TV. And so that's kind of... What we're doing now, we, um, we're we content creators, we're, we also, we're kind of the host for the platform and we're actively producing content, also licensing third party content onto our platform. And it's really a community. So it's a community of uh, families around the US and around the world who are committed to getting off their couches into creation, experiencing an adventure and um, following Christ with their lives. Yeah. Yeah. So. so we grew up in the jungle. We'd come back every like three and a half to 40 years. Yeah. And the problem that we saw was interacting with our peers is that many of them are just lukewarm. Um, what our culture, our media, and even many of our churches are teaching our young people is that you are to follow your own dreams, your own ambitions, you know, follow yourself. Right. And um, that's just not what God's words teaches us. Mm-hmm. And being on the field, we got to see God work in amazing ways, got to witness firsthand that following Christ is the ultimate adventure in life. Right. So that's really kind of our motto, following yeah. Christ is the ultimate adventure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of why we created Wild Brothers TV mm-hmm. is to combat all these, all those false narrative that our culture is teaching our young people. For sure. Um, and through the medium of entertainment, really action-packed adventure entertainment, share with our young people that uh, following Christ yeah. is the ultimate yeah. adventure. I say that all the time. Awesome. Like uh, somehow Christianity has been turned into trying to not sin, mm-hmm. as yeah. opposed to actually following Jesus is what makes it fun and exciting. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like because you don't know, okay. God, Where's the spirit going to take us? You know, yeah. you'd see that in Acts all the time, right? Where the spirit's leading them places, or he wisps up Philip and takes them somewhere. Yeah. You know, all of these things. And uh, I know I've I've had lots of uh, good missionary friends and things along those lines. That it's interesting to me how you see a lot more of, of the spiritual realm, or you see a lot of, of more of the, more of kind of like Acts stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in other countries or remote areas, then we when, then do you guys see some of that, or or as opposed to seeing it here in America? Not that it's not happening sure. here, but it feels almost more covered up or something, or we're not exposed to it, or, or we don't we're cluttered, we don't man. say we're what it is. Here. Right. So I'm just curious your your thought. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That. Yeah. Well, we grew up you know in a remote context, and the people group that we worked with were animistic, and animistic means that a people group their worldview is that the spiritual realm controls everything. Yeah. So their lives were, were in constant bondage to fear and trying to manipulate the evil spirits so life would go well for them. Mm-hmm. So if their gardens were going to flourish, if their hunting trips were going to be successful, if they were going to be able to have babies, they believed all that was controlled by the spirits. And so making sacrifices and daily appeasements mm-hmm. was kind of what controlled their life. And so really a mm. hard, hard life. And so with that, you see a lot more of the spiritual side of things. Yeah. Um, they weren't just believing and nothing. Like the forces and the evil spirits that they believed in, there's actually a Some real side to that. to that. Yeah. And um, yeah. oftentimes interaction, you know, and they would have their certain witch doctors that would actually communicate with evil spirits, and mm-hmm. that determined how the culture and the community was going to yeah. live that week. Yeah. Um, and so we got to see the, that really real side yeah. of it. So when the gospel came... Which you would recognize as like a demonic presence. Yeah, presence. Demonic, yeah. demonic beings yeah, and territorial yeah. spirits. Sure. Um, and so when the gospel came, there's a lot of opposition during those couple months. Yeah. It took about three months uh, for my dad and our coworker to teach from, from Genesis to Christ. A that lot after, of opposition. after been living with them for five years before right. the gospel yeah. was shared for yeah. the first well, time. Making, making, uh, 
earning the right to have the conversation. Yeah, almost. yeah. 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 that's right. We had yeah. to. Well, we had to learn the language. It was actually an oral culture, so their okay. their language had never been written down. So it took years for oh our parents gosh. to fully become completely competent and, and fluent mm. to be able to actually yeah. communicate on a heart to heart level. Right. A lot of mission work today, people are taking major shortcuts <laughs> and they don't take the time to actually, you know, learn people's worldview, actually, you know, yep. be able to speak into their lives, yeah. earn that right to speak. The, in, so the instant gratification culture. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Or jump straight to John 3.16 and yeah. never, never yeah. really, just, just assume yeah. that people yeah. understand what all that means. Right. Yeah. Yeah. In our yeah. postmodern world. To, you have to usher people to that place. Yeah. You yeah. can't that's right. just drop so, the I mean, bomb yeah, on Yeah, the whole Bible is explained in one verse, but, you yeah. know, that's, but <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go deeper. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of people divorce culture from language right and and the two are hand in hand yeah. so understanding the one whose worldview was an integral part to communicating the gospel clearly because it's a process of exchanging their old mm -hmm. worldview with the truths of the God's Word yeah and saying this is what your ancestors believed in and taught you this yeah. is what you believe this is what God's Word says mm -hmm. and we have to come to a choice of yeah what, what are we gonna believe what a gift for your parents too for for the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit to be able to like not everyone's gonna be able to gravitate to language mm -hmm. like that you know what I mean I, I really see that as a, as a mm -hmm. spiritual gift um, to be able to communicate to someone that's not of your native tongue yeah. and be able to communicate the gospel and that like that mm -hmm. that is just a cool thing that I think that God does with with certain individuals yeah. so our, our dad is a talented I was linguist say, prop, yeah. props yeah. to your dad yeah. for uh, <laughs> I have a, a good friend that's a missionary in Rwanda and in two weeks all he could just speak the language and people think that he's native uh, because of how well he can speak wow. it, and so it's like, wow. is it like, it's like, it's almost like a different form of the gift of tongues, you mm. know, where where God is enabling people to share His wow. truth in a native tongue, yeah, uh, for the purpose of sharing, of edifying, and you know, yep. building the kingdom. So I just, I think it's a cool thing. Well, it's it's funny because my dad's dream was to become like a marine biologist and study jellyfish. Like that was his dream. He was yeah. fascinated by corals and jellyfish. Mm -hmm. Never spoke a second language, and it wasn't until he got to the field that he realized. You know, yeah. just had that natural gifting of learning language and being yeah. able to kind of dissect the grammar. But, yeah. but we really saw what you're talking about. That are you guys acts. able to do that still? Do you, can you speak the language? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you grow up in it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. still it's still heart language. Yeah. Wano and then the national language Indonesian. It's interesting because wow. I mean, you don't have I don't I don't hear an accent anyway. You know, at all. No, obviously, you guys sound like no, you're from Florida. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we're still very much American yeah. at heart. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. But um. But we got to see kind of those acts, miracles happen when yeah. the Wano Church actually came to maturity and then took it on themselves to take the gospel to different parts of their tribe. Yeah. Their territory wow. was so so large, but the people group was only around like 1,500 people. So okay. they're semi-nomadic, they travel. Yeah. And so you have hours and hours in between mm. little ham family hamlets. Mm -hmm. um, so when the Wano understood the gospel, felt burdened for their other villages, they were like, we need to go take the gospel. Yeah. And so it was when the Wano church actually raised up elders, sent them out, um, that we really got to see, just like the book of Acts, the the reproduction. Disciples are then going to making disciples, right. which are making disciples. Right. And it was in those contexts that the Lord worked in really mighty ways and in miraculous ways. Yeah. Things happened that no one had ever seen before. Um, you know, there's villagers that got bit by poisonous snakes and would always die. But, you know, a one elder would pray over them and they, and they wouldn't die. Yeah. And everyone was wondering, how is this happening? Mm -hmm. And they would, you know, opportunities to point back to the Creator. Yeah. This is yeah. the power of God. Yeah. And, you know, you need to understand what we're going to teach you guys. Yeah. And so there's a lot of ways that the Lord worked powerfully mm -hmm. to make His name great yeah. in those areas. Was there ever a time that you guys felt like, like, like fearful or, or had, to, had to almost overcome or... Because I think a lot of people, when it comes to like spiritual warfare, talking about demonic stuff, it's like it freaks them out, and, and so they they almost like cover like just let's not talk about it, you know. Yeah. Um, and maybe because of how your age, or maybe you know you your parents did a good job of, of helping you feel equipped. Um, maybe have you ever felt fearful? And if you haven't, or how did you overcome that? Or, or what would you tell somebody like? Mm. How to, how to combat that kind of stuff. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, for us, we were, uh, as, I mean, when the when the Wano Church was born, that was probably the, the time of the most intensive spiritual warfare that our family experienced. A lot of that at the time was, was sheltered from us, from our parents, and it wasn't until years later that a lot of stories came out, and we heard things that we, we didn't realize were happening at that time. But as, as younger kids growing up in that context, there were <laughs> moments where we felt the, the, the spiritual darkness and just the heavy, you know, oppression and, 
that manifested itself in different ways um, through sometimes like lucid dreams and and there's a couple of strange stories but um, we, well, we all one, had one the, instance was we um, we all got sick with malaria okay um, malaria is very uncomfortable and it's uh-huh. a mosquito borne illness yep um, it, it never kill, got it in kills it. lots of people too yeah, I mean, does, I mean, yeah, people succumb to it all the time I know yeah. a lot of people ask us what's the most dangerous thing in the jungle yeah. and we always bit. say it's, yeah. it's the mosquito <laughs> it's yeah, mosquito. yeah. yeah. Um, we we had malaria all reoccurring each about like six or seven times and it, and in it never a three had month period okay. so was, as we're trying to. Yeah. And the uh, weird thing is that at, our, at that elevation, malaria is like very uncommon, and we had never had it. And so it was just around that time of actually teaching the gospel that, that that's when that started plaguing our mm-hmm. family. And it was that combined oh. with a lot of other things that just seemed seemed too coincidental yeah. to be yeah. like this is just you a know, heavy time. Just a heavy yeah. time. So we felt that as as. Um, as kids, we, we all had the benefit of growing up in, in a home where the gospel was preached early on. And so my brothers and I were all saved more or less earlier in, in, in our life. And I think I think the presence of the Holy Spirit is the biggest is the biggest thing in terms of just feeling at peace when there is spiritual warfare. Yeah. Because as believers um, who are, are indwelled by the Holy Spirit, that doesn't mean that we're not going to, I mean, the battle is against spiritual powers and, and sure. rulers and principalities. And so we do run into that sometimes, but uh, with the Holy Spirit, um, we need, we don't need to fear ultimately those things because we know that every every spirit, every yeah. ruler, every power is ultimately under the authority of Christ, and He's He's ruling and reigning. And so, yeah. I mean, uh, as believers, I feel like we can have tr- we can experience true peace, right. and that doesn't mean we're not going to encounter strange things yeah. in our lives or have moments of well, that's weird. But so, but ultimately, it's for people who don't have that spirit yeah. that we're, are at we're risk of being to, yeah. really oppressed and, and abused by evil spirits. We're trying to teach our kids. You know, my kids are. Not 9, 9, 11, and 12. Yeah. And so we're trying to teach them like to be aware right. of, 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 you know, spiritual warfare, but at the same time not to be afraid of it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, and so, uh, but also, the, the, so then they're going through this discerning process, mm-hmm. right, at their ages of, okay, is this thing that I have, is it good or does it have like some sort of demonic something attached to it or whatever? And so maybe you guys can, uh, as you've kind of drifted back into American culture. Now you're doing entertainment, right? Mm -hmm. And so obviously you want to be putting out good quality stuff that's bringing God's truth. Uh, But what would you say to, to, to families that are like, do you think that there can be spiritual stuff that is attached to things that maybe you're bringing into your home that aren't, 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 you know, Christ based? Have you thought about that? I don't know. It's just a, a, a question we wrestle with in our yeah. family, I guess. Yeah, like if there's like some kind of spiritual presence attached to different things that we're bringing into the home. Yeah. When it, through like our entertainment and things along those lines. I think it's clear that the enemy has commandeered, you know, uh, and he, he's, you know, his lies and deception are inside of all t- sorts of things, books, media, I mean, entertainment. So I think, well, I think definitely people mm-hmm. are, are, you know, are being influenced, you know, by Satan and by his, his minions. And we see that in the culture mm. in terms of actually like no, having, I, I definitely think so. There, there's, I mean, there's, there's different content that we can bring in the homes that, uh, especially as young people are seeing it and being influenced that, you know, will make them think about things that aren't profitable. Mm-hmm. That aren't that aren't good. Right, distraction is, is a huge yeah. tool. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, and I think the I think the enemy can definitely use that as a foothold mm-hmm. to, to to creep in. Yeah, you yeah. know. So I definitely yeah. think as Christian parents, you have to filter what your kids are going to be watching, what you're bringing yeah. into the home. Yeah, yeah. And you can quickly see what influences your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, my son is nine months, and so mm-hmm. he's not watching content that's influencing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I have friends, yeah. and a lot of families will say, "Man." My kid's starting to have an attitude or using language that yeah. is just not acceptable. Too much or, Caillou. Yeah. <laughs> you know, where is this coming from? And then they realize, oh, he just started watching this yeah. this show. Yeah. And the kids in the show are, yeah. are rude to their parents. Right. They're disrespectful. Mm-hmm. They're rude to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and now my kid is being sassy, you know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're going to stop watching this show. You see yeah. those correlations. and Or, yeah. or man, my kid's waking yeah. up every night with nightmares. Yeah, like, that's, I, that's I the a, one for us. Yeah, My son's a year mm-hmm. and a half. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we... You know, the only thing he's really started watching is like Bluey, yeah. uh, and, and but, but you a, see, even, Bluey even is actually that, 
quite good. Yeah, actually. Blue Lehigh oh, is, man, is it drives a, me nuts. It's a little wholesome. No, but I like but I like the I like the, the it's great for an accent. Their yeah. angle, yeah. Right, right, right. I like their angle. It doesn't yeah. drive me nuts. My but, kids even still like. But you them. see the you see the correlation between yeah, definitely what our kids are consuming and then how yes. that's affecting their you know their their yeah. worldview and shaping you know for them what are priorities and how I ought to act and interact with others. So mm. yeah. I definitely think there's there's a connection between those things. I think one of the biggest safeguards that my parents Im- uh, implemented because um, they're in a situation where they did often wrestle with we're, we're here and our kids are in a lot of danger you know, from spiritual yeah. attack, from influence from the tribal people who live very differently than a biblical model. Yep. Now, how is this influencing our kids? Mm-hmm. And they would bathe us in teaching and in prayer yeah. and, um, and taught us to be prayer warriors as yep. well. Exactly. And I think that was the primary tool growing up that we used to mm-hmm. fight. I mean, even in si- weird situations where we were being plagued with with dreams and almost dreams where you wake up but you're mm-hmm. still I mean just weird oppressive stuff that yep. is you know demonic and yep. then a, a spiritual attack and um, I remember even from a young young age crying out to the Lord and asking for deliverance mm-hmm. and then you know praying and yeah. my parents every night would pray for us I mean just consistently in our home church praying for us mm-hmm. and yeah. I think that's the primary tool that yeah. we use to battle this war that's waging that's raging right. is by crying out well, to the Lord when, when, when Satan's most threatened Who's he gonna come after, right? Mm-hmm. The people, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the people doing that, that yeah. good work, yeah. you know. Yeah. My and grandma so, used to say, "But you must be doing something right." That's right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. He really, he's trying hard yeah. to bring you down. That's right. You know. And um, it's really interesting because growing up in the field, you know, we see a lot of attack, spiritual attack, but a lot of opposition, a lot of persecution, mm-hmm. and. The New Testament is all about that. I mean, it promises yeah. us. I mean, even Christ said, you know, if you're going to be my follower, pick up your cross and follow me. Yeah, really right. harsh words, you know. If you want to follow me, you're going to have to hate your parents. You know, you're going to have to love me more over everything yeah. else. And um, back here in the States, we Flip were that. really fearful. You have to love Jesus more than your kids. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but I think the stance here in the States is we're just, we're lovers of comfort. Yeah. We've really grown to love our comfort and, um, and expect that. I'm doing this, so my life should go well. Yeah. And um, there's, right. and in a lot of situations, we don't see opposition. And in my mind, it's a warning flag. It's like for, for churches that aren't seeing persecution or suffering, mm-hmm. um, are they on the front lines? Mm-hmm. Or is the enemy just like, these guys aren't doing anything important. I don't need to even worry about yeah. them. I'm yeah. going to go attack these let's guys. Just let, right. let's let it grow. Yeah, yeah, let's let yeah. It grow. yeah. yeah. You know? They're doing a great job yeah. ignoring yeah. God's word. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's and just it, let them. Yeah. And, and a prime mm-hmm. example is, is you know, Job. And mm-hmm. that's an example of, you know, of a, of a man who's living righteously, but who faced serious, you know, spiritual attack and warfare. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the response of his friends was, wow, you must have done something wrong in order to, in right. order to deserve this judgment. Mm-hmm. And so often, even in our own lives, because of, wow. in, you know, because of oftentimes even just, you know, broad Christian narratives about, of about wealth, health, and success. Like mm-hmm. if, if these are our standards, if this is just what it means to be a Christian, when life doesn't go well, or we, when we are faced with attack, it's like, we think, oh man, we must be doing something yeah. wrong. And, some, yeah. and usually it's, it's the other way around. Yeah. So. I love that your yeah. parents were investing in you guys too as young kids to teach you how to handle it yourselves. Mm. Like that's something we're trying to do with ours as well mm. is like, hey, I can pray for you, mm. but you can actually do it yourself mm. as well. And so uh, our daughter was having like panic, at, like uh, night terrors, mm. really bad night terrors. Mm. And then she would, uh, you know, these she was afraid to go to sleep at night Mm. and so we uh started like at first i i prayed with her Mm. and you know and we were you know praying all the stuff and i'm like okay now i want you to do it Mm. and uh let's do it together for a little while and then eventually i said okay if this happens Mm. i don't want you to come to me because god is with you i want you to stay in your bed and i want you to do it you know, now if it gets really bad, obviously we're always yeah. here yeah. for you. Yeah. But now it's gotten to the point where she's able to really start combating the, that, that spiritual stuff on her own. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's great. Awesome. So, that's really that's awesome. Cool. You know, yeah. it's it's uh, it's fantastic. You know, I'm I'm getting getting up near fifty. You know, and it, he's basically dead. I'm basically <laughs> like I'm, I'm just, the verge of I'm death. Just I'm so old. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's re- it's really nice to see some young men in their 20s you got young families and you guys were raised well by your parents who loved on you but also allowed gave you a lot of freedom to mm-hmm. adventure and explore and, and, and be tested but it's nice to know I f- you know I feel like you're passing the torch to like this generation sure. and it's nice to know that there's good strong men out there 
that are going to do it the right way. And, um, you know, we just need more of them to continue to stand up and speak boldly and mm. truthfully and create and, good content and have, yeah, and have strong families yep. and raise strong children. Yep. And ultimately, that's, that's what we're called to do, right? Make disciples, make mm. disciples of our children, of exactly. our own family. And uh, it starts with, I, 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 you know, it starts with kingdom men. Mm -hmm. You know, and you guys are are, are, yeah. are are doing it, and I just applaud what yeah. you're doing, and and uh, you know, keep keep going. So yeah. before we wrap Thank up, you. Wild Brothers yeah. TV. Yeah. What's it about? We didn't really get to that. We we yeah. man, we, we went, did a little bit. We, 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 we went touched like, on it. We, we touched like on it. Really really so, yeah. so which is great. I mean, yeah. it was a really really good conversation. Um, I just I want to know for for those listening, like, okay, well, where do I get it? Right. What am I going to be getting? Yeah, well, um, so Wild Brothers TV, it's basically a, it's our own streaming platform. It's an app. It's available for mobile apps, like mobile, your phone, Roku TVs, all smart TVs. Um, and basically, it's kind of a curated collection of outdoor adventure, missional content. Mm -hmm. So it is Wild Brothers TV that's in the name. So most of it is stuff that we've produced over the last, like, eight years. Um, we're actively producing content. We also have licensed third-party content as well. And so we work with a, with a lot of different Christian ministries. And um, in addition to the content that you that you that your kids can enjoy watching, there's also a community feature. So Wild Brothers TV is much more than just a streaming platform. It's really a membership where we're growing a community of Christ followers who are passionate about living on God's mission, getting off their couches into creation, and um, really f that following Jesus is the ultimate adventure. So mm. you have basically a safe you know, social media presence on Wild Brothers TV that oh, good. basically families across the U.S. and around the world are engaging on on a daily basis, posting pictures of their adventures out, out in God's creation, edifying, encouraging. So it's yeah. really a big, it's a big community. Mm. There's a lot of entertainment, mm -hmm. um, but it's all on the app, wildbrothers.tv. Yeah, Wild Brothers TV has become the number one platform for Great Commissions Entertainment. Yeah. So it's very mis Great Commissions Entertainment. Okay. Um, so very missional, very apologetics focused. Like Morgan said, it is a community. So we jump on live streams once to two times a month to kind of connect with everyone, get them engaged, get kids excited about going outside on their own adventures, mm -hmm. um, but really kind of show the diversity of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So Wild Brothers TV, we want it to be a tool to mobilize young Christian families, get them excited about seeing how they can play a part in God's Great Commission. Mm -hmm. Whether that's being an overseas missionary, whether that's being here in the States, we're all called to be that ambassador. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So showing how the body of Christ is diverse and beautiful. Yeah. And so we, we have other ministry partners jump on. Mission Aviation Fellowship is one of them. Like a lot of our kids want to be pilots. Yeah. So showing, hey, you can use your giftings to go be a missionary pilot mm -hmm. or you know, to be a pastor. And we have different conferences that we're associated with so people can stream conferences show them international missions and also just to kind of model families here in the US that are living it out. So a new a new uh, TV show we're having coming on is called Zoo Tales. It's about a family that they're zookeepers but they're believers. Yeah. And uh, they take their role as ambassadors of Christ seriously and so a lot of their staff have come to Christ and so it's going to be a great show about animals, educational yeah. but also reality, what it means to be a zookeeper and then through that also show how this family is living on mission right here in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And so a diverse diversity of content. We have um, our wives are doing like a cooking slash lifestyle show. Mm -hmm. It's about 50% of our audience are young women. So how do you raise a godly home you as, a, as a woman? You huh? Yeah. yeah. You, got them, man. Yeah, you yeah. get four good looking little, yeah. you know, boys yeah. you know, who become men. Yeah. You know, the, the, the ladies come the to, show, to watch. They, they you know? Exactly. So our wives are in our show. We've got animated series going. So just a I diversity of I saw that over at your booth there. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. It's great. Yeah, also, so wildbrothers.tv is where Wild to find it yeah. Love it. It's awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for thank you guys. taking yeah. taking five minutes that turned into 30 <laughs> uh, to, to hang out with great. us. And, thank uh, Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, blessings to you, and uh, hopefully we, we get to stay connected. Absolutely. Sounds great. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, thank you guys. Fellas. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, Please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.